Welcome to Knoxville Raceway Inside Line with your host, Eric Arnold, presented by Lucas Oil, FVP, Casey's General Store, Speed Sport, Arnold Motor Supply, RacingJunk.com, and Pella Motors. Welcome to Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. I am your host, Eric Arnold, Knoxville Raceway Track Historian. Thank you for joining us tonight, race fans. Every Thursday night here we'll be talking sprint car racing on KBOE 104.9 here in Oskaloosa or KBOERadio.com, your station for racing. Coming up a little bit later in our program tonight, our guest will be Clint Garner. Clint was a 360 champion the past five years at Knoxville Raceway, and this year they have moved up to the 410 class and have uh, quietly snuck into the top 10 in points in the 410 class. So I thought it'd be good to catch up with Clint to see kind of how their season's going and, and, and progressing. After three straight rainouts at Knoxville, we were finally blessed with some nice weather on Saturday night. It was 79 degrees, and we had a really good crowd. Uh, we hadn't had three weeks washed out consecutively since uh, the floods of 93 that year, and uh, that year it happened twice, so that was just an awful year there. And uh, Saturday night, we had 97 sprint cars total uh, filling up the pit area almost near capacity. There's 100 pit stalls on the concrete spots there that they have, so it was good to see that many cars in attendance. When you get closer to uh, Nationals time here in August, it always seems like you get more cars gearing up, wanting to test and tune to make sure they're ready for those big events. This past Thursday night was IMCA Harris Clash Hawkeye Dirt Tour event. There were 148 cars in attendance for that race for modifieds and sport mods, and we ran the dirt trucks. Winning the sport mod feature was Brett Lowry. You see him racing out here at Oskaloosa at the Southern Iowa Speedway uh, almost every Wednesday night. And uh, winning the, the modified feature at the Harris Clash was Chris Abelson of Sioux City. So congratulations to those two guys on a, on a fine event there on uh, a week ago last Thursday night. Some notable names uh, in the sprint car side then that were at Knoxville Saturday night. We had Sammy Swindell, who was the 1983 Knoxville Nationals champion. He, this will be his 40th try to win the Nationals uh, this coming year. So he's won it once, but this will be his 40th entry in 2014. Uh, he was lucky enough to draw the number one for qualifying and went out and set quick time on the night. Also checking in on the night was uh, Rico Abreu from California, talented driver. He races sprint cars and midgets. Uh, he's been having a, a pretty good last couple of seasons here on that side and is possibly looking at moving up the ranks into NASCAR, so it was good to have Rico Abreu in attendance. The rest of the top ten in qualifying was uh, Brian Brown second, Lasoski. Linton Jeffrey, Bronson Mason, Terry McCarl, Dusty Zomer, Justin Henderson, Clint Garner, and Ian Madsen rounded up the top 10. There were 35 cars in the 410 class, so the format for this night was four heat races. They invert six cars in those races, and only the top five advanced to the A main, so the heat races were, were really exciting. The winners of those were Clint Garner, who started in the second row. Brian Brown won the second heat. He started in the third row. Jason Johnson and Don Droud won the next two heats from the front row. Uh, Brian Brown was really impressive in his heat race coming from the third row there with a last uh, lap corner pass on Craig Delansky to get the win. The B main uh, for the four tens was stacked. You had Danny Lasoski, Linton Jeffrey, Rico Abreu, Bronson Mason, last year's track champion, uh, Josh Schneiderman. The heat invert and only taking five like that. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, fast cars were Stuck in the B main, and that made it interesting. Lasoski uh, winning the B main there on, in that race. In the A main, Ian Madsen was the leader most of the race. Wayne Johnson uh, led the first couple of laps. Ian Madsen got by on lap three. He led the race uh, through lap traffic. They got into lap 18, and he kind of got pinned behind a lap car, and Justin Henderson was able to slip by him on the inside in turns three and four just before they came around for the white flag. So Henderson led the last two laps and went on to win his first uh, 410 feature of the season at Knoxville. Uh, it was only two laps he's led all season in a feature event. So a big win for Justin Henderson. He's won a 360 feature and now a 410 feature in 2014 at Knoxville. Ian Madsen would then settle for second place. Wayne Johnson held on for third. Uh, Wayne did a really good job holding off a lot of fast cars behind him to hang on to that third spot. The uh, racetrack didn't widen out much in turns three and four. Drivers were able to kind of uh, flat foot it all the way around at that end of the racetrack. Uh, with uh, the sun coming down in the west on that side, it shades uh, that surface a little bit more, and it just uh, 
that's just the way historically turns three and four have been at Knoxville. Uh, it just doesn't take as much moisture out of the racetrack like it does over in turns one and two. And so three and four was a little faster, a little narrower, harder to pass. There were still two grooves there, but both grooves were just equally fast. So horsepower was a, a premium on this night. Uh, the track seemed, you know, very similar to what you would see on a Wednesday night nationals racetrack. That, so it was a, a good test for a lot of teams as far as nationals, I think. And the Duncans prepared a very nice racing surface, uh, held up nice for all three classes. And the best part of this night with that many cars, we did not have any red flags. There were two caution periods, uh, in the th one in the 360 feature and one in the 410 feature. So it was a good, safe night of racing. Uh, so kudos to, to the drivers and the track crew uh, for, for doing a good job there. The rest of the run down there in the 410 A main in fourth was Dusty Zomer, fifth Brian Brown, sixth Sammy Swindell, seventh Clint Garner, eighth Terry McCarl, ninth Davey Heskin, and tenth Craig Delansky. And Delansky, he uh, qualified 22nd, I believe, had to start 18th in the A main and worked his way up to 10th, so it was a good run for him, but a disappointing qualifying effort for, for his team, I'm sure, and getting closer to nationals with qualifying being so important, I'm sure that's something that they're going to focus on this week. Him and his uh, crew chief, Guy Forbrook, I'm sure they'll get that uh, big game number seven sprint car figured out and dialed in for the Nationals. Rico Abreu was the hard charger, starting 22nd and finishing 12th, so moving up 10 positions for Rico. Moving on to the 360 class, Justin Henderson set quick time for the sixth time this season with a lap of 16.267, uh, followed by Joe Beaver, Billy Alley, Matt Morrow, and John Egan. Jeff Swindell was sixth, so it was good to have Jeff Swindell show up. He was there getting some practice laps for the 360 Nationals. With the 34 cars entered in the 360 class, they also had four heat races, inverting six, so it was a, a premium there in the heat races. The track was fast, hard to pass on. The heat race winners were Wayne Johnson, Dylan Peterson, Josh Bauman of Texas, and Russ Hall, all the heat winners coming from the first uh, the front row. And like I said, a fast, narrow track there. In the A main, Calvin Landis jumped out to an early lead, but couldn't hold off Dusty Zomer, who would go on and win fairly easily there at the end. Justin Henderson, who started eighth, uh, was reeling in Zomer there in the last closing laps, but he ran out of time. Henderson finishing second in the 360 class as well after winning the, the 410 feature, so a good night for Justin Henderson and the Brian Sunby number one team. Russ Hall was impressive, coming from 17th to 8th. And then uh, Joe Beaver was able to leap around John Egan for the point lead at the end of the night. Uh, Beaver is, is having a heck of a season, but it was a tough break for John Egan. They uh, timed fifth, so they, they qualified well. They started inside row three of their heat, and they just weren't able to, to get around anybody in their heat race on the first heat race of the, of the night in that class. And there's a lot of tough competitors, Wayne Johnson, Dusty Zomer, Henderson, uh, Ryan Roberts. It was, a, it was a stacked heat race in front of him. So it was a tough break for him having to run the B main and start towards the back and work his way up. He started 22nd and worked his way uh, to 13th, so a good good save for him. But they they lost a few points, and uh, Joe Beaver is now your 360 point leader with only two more weekly races to go in the 360 class. The uh, 360 A main finish, Dusty Zomer your winner, Justin Henderson second, Calvin Landis third, Jamie Ball fourth, Jeff Swindell fifth. Then rounding out the top 10 was Joe Beaver, Lee Groves, Russ Hall, Jared Schneiderman, and Jason Johnson. Moving on to the 305 division, Matthew Stelzer set quick time. That was the third time this season he'd done that. Uh, but Stelzer's motor kind of went kaput on him there in the heat race, and uh, they were done for the night. So a DNF in the heat race, and they did not start the feature. So tough break as uh, Stelzer was leading the points going into the night. He ended up dropping to third in points by the end of the night. Heat race winners in the 305s were Stacy Alexander, Mitchell Alexander, and Dustin Clark. In the 305 A main, uh, it was one of the more exciting 305 features of the season. They were able to run more laps this week. Normally their features have been 12. They extended that to 15 this week. Jay Kinder and Devin Klein battling out. Devin Klein is a rookie, and this was only his sixth career start at Knoxville. So uh, he did a, a great job. He started, uh, started on the front row, but he had to work for it. Kinder got around him there, uh, and then Klein drove back around him. When they got through some lap traffic, Klein did a good job taking advantage of Kinder's mistake there. Congratulations to Devin Klein on a big win there. That's pretty cool to see a guy who, a local guy who lives around here in Knoxville and always dreamed of driving a sprint car and then to actually win a race at Knoxville in his first season as a rookie. 
Uh, it was a pretty special night for him. So in the 305 AMA, Devin Klein is your winner. Jay Kinder second. Steve Brazil third. Keone Texera from Hawaii finished fourth. Career best finish for Keone. Fifth was Kevin Hetrick. So there is your race recap of this past Saturday night at the Knoxville Raceway. Thanks to uh, Pella Motors presenting your race recap this week. When we come back, we will have Clint Gardner on the line. So stay tuned. This is KBOE 104.9, and you're listening to the Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. Welcome back to the Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. Joining us tonight on the show is sprint car driver Clint Garner. Thanks for joining us tonight, Clint. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Good start to the season for you guys so far in 2014. You know, coming from the 360 class the last few years and moving up to the 410, has it been a, as big a, a jump going back to the 410s this year as, as you thought it was, or has, has it been harder or easier? I honestly, it's been a lot harder than it was than is expected. You know, I tried to be humble about it and thought I was gonna take it easy and, and I would be able to, you know, in my own mind, I thought I was gonna be able to get up to speed quite fast, you know. But uh, you know, I had some some instances, but I couldn't get it got done consistently, and I'm still not, you know, completely there. But we're a lot closer the last few times out on the racetrack, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, it seems like as the season's been going, you've steadily improved each week. Uh, you had a quick time a couple of weeks ago, so your qualifying efforts have, have improved for sure. Yeah, and quick time to me really means a lot. I mean, it doesn't pay anything, and there's no award even given out, but to everybody there is trying their hardest to get that. So to do that, it's, it's, you know, it's like a win. You know, to me, I really ain't doing it for the money and the self-satisfaction, what it's all about, you know, and a little pleasure here and there. and. Boy, being quick time definitely gives you a little satisfaction. Yeah, you bet it does. Talking about your, your future finishes, and your average finish for the seasons, I think, is, is 10.9, I figured up. It seems like, quietly here, you've snuck into the top 10 in points in the 410 class, so so congratulations there on, on that. But uh, I guess, what were your goals at the beginning of the season as far as your expectations in the points? And We were hoping to run a top five in the points. You know, it's obviously not going to happen. I had one night where... Um, I had to pull the car in because of an oil um, smoke that came out of the uh, oil tank and got on the header, and I panicked. And, and I could have probably stayed out on the racetrack, but, you know, my job as a driver for Parker Engines is kind of to make the engines better and, and give feedback and try to, to make them last as long as I possibly can, you know. And that night it, it poofed a little smoke. I was the second night of the season in the heat race, and it, it poofed a little smoke out at me, and... Like I said, I overreacted, and I and I kind of hurt my points racing because of that. But, you know, we're, we're happier than heck to be 10th in the points. There's good cars behind us, and, and we're still hoping that we can maybe get a win this season. I know it's, we're running out of time with the rain dates, but, you know, we haven't been on the racetrack that many times. Yeah, the rain has, has put a damper on all of us for that. So uh, talk a little bit about uh, kind of how you guys decided to jump from a 360 to a 410 this year. What was kind of the deciding factor for you guys there? Oh, it's, all of us were really looking forward to the to challenge, you know. Not that racing a 360 wasn't a challenge. As a driver and from my shoes, it was more than a big, cha- big enough challenge. But, uh, you know, my fans, my crew, my engine builder, everybody else wanted to kind of do it. And I know that we can do it. I just need to figure out a way to consistently do it so i took the challenge and and i'm, I'm happy we did you know there's definitely a, a different set of feelings that come with running fifth in the 410 division versus uh you know compared to fifth in the 360 division no no you know no pun intended i'm not trying to say anything just i i said it at the banquet last year and i'll say it again you know i feel like most of the 360 drivers have day jobs just like i do and there's a lot of 410 drivers that this is all they do is just race, you know. So that's going to be hard to keep up with for anybody who works a normal job 50, 60 hours a week and then, and then uh, you know, go and tangle yourself with people who race 100 times a year when you're only going to do it 12. It's, it's, it's quite a chore. Yeah, it is. You, like you said, you do have a, a day job. Just talk a little bit about, about what you do. I, I know I called you earlier today to set up a time for an interview, and you said you were working 7 to 7 today. Talk about what what you do, Clint Garner, outside of racing. Uh, Well, at home here, I'm a truck mechanic, and then, uh, you know, that's where I started as a kid, and then I went on to be a a residential plumber. I did about seven, eight years of residential plumbing, and now I'm involved in the the family business 
um, which is my father-in-law's business, uh, Midwest Excavating, and he's slowly turning the business over to us kids, and well, right now I'm moving an excavator uh, with a semi-truck, you know, so we're doing, uh, we're doing ex- excavating, and we're doing mostly residential work, and we're working sun up till sundown, you know, so we're busy. Yeah, long hours there, it sounds like. Um, yeah. how, how do you balance the work and the racing as far as during the week? Are you able to, to do any work during the week, or do you have other people helping you there in, in your shop at home? Uh, I do have one guy who comes and helps on Mondays and helps wash the car. We dedicate all Monday nights to washing, and um, Thursday nights are for loading back up. Friday night we leave and come to Knoxville. And, you know, biggest thing is my family. You know, we're the ones that are my son. He, he doesn't get to see near as much of his dad as a lot of kids do, but he enjoys racing too, and, I, you know, I think he's seeing how hard it is to get what you want, you know, if you if you want to have a good time and whatnot, you're going to have to work and put the time in. Uh, you're going to let him race if he's ready to when he gets a little older? Yeah, you know, it's funny because he's six now, and he's finally starting to talk about it a little bit, but uh, when he was younger, he wouldn't even hardly pay attention to the race car. His little buddies were just happier than heck to be anywhere near it, and he was wanting to go around the corner and pull weeds, you know, and just do anything but hang out with the race car. So, but the older he gets, the more he's paying paying attention to what's going on. And he definitely has talked about driving the 40 car someday. So, hopefully, you know, he he can pursue that. I'd love it if he did. You're from the, the Sioux Falls area, and there's just a, a really good crop of guys from around that area right now that that come to Knoxville and race weekly. What what do you think it is about you know guys like you and Henderson and Zomer? I mean, is there something that up in that Sioux Falls area and racing at Houston's that has helped you translate at Knoxville? I think Houston's does give a guy a lot of good qualities, you know. But I don't know. I mean, Doug Wolfking might deserve some of the credit. You know, he's the guy who had all our attention when we were little kids and. You know, Zomer and, and Henderson both did some racing when they were younger. I didn't race when I was younger. I didn't get to start racing until I was 17. But, uh, you know, just the drive to be the next Doug Wolfgang, I think, has really kept a few of us going. Yeah, I mean, uh, Doug Wolfgang, you know, five-time Nationals champion and and a very successful driver there in the in the 70s and 80s. So, yeah, I can, I can see how that would be a big influence for all of you guys. Coming up here next week is the 360 Nationals. I take it you guys have a car ready to go for that. Yes, we do. Uh, what are your goals this year for 360 and the 410 Nationals? I really have a tough time setting my goals too high. You know, I'm I'm hoping for a top five again. You know, it's uh, last year we qualified. We were parked up on the front row with those guys before the before the A main, and I definitely want to be sitting there. But you need a little luck on qualifying night. You know, besides having good equipment, good crew, and driver, I mean, you need a little luck too. I feel so, um, especially in my shoes where you're just racing kind of part time. And I know uh, usually the the cream will rise to the top. And and Jason Johnson and uh, some of those guys that race for a living almost always do kind of rise to the top. But I kind of need the ball to start rolling the right direction for me from the very get go. I have really struggle to, to come from the underdog in that situation are you guys planning to run uh, two cars at all this saturday night to prepare no i don't think we're gonna just because i, I don't want to divert my attention off of my 410 deal um it's, it's a total different driving style and i don't really feel like i'm good enough to be trying to drive this way and then that way all in the same night and you know i'm not really happy with the results out of the 410 car yet so there's no way i want to distract you know me or my crew from that so we'll just race one car at a time and and see how you know how the ball bounces okay well uh clint um congratulations uh, you know your top 10 in points i don't think that's anything to be uh, hold your head down about it at all so good luck to you at the nationals and uh, thanks for joining us on the show tonight yeah no problem thanks uh, a lot yep. to see everybody out there seems like clint's a little bit uh, disappointed that he's only uh tenth in points this year but after racing 360s for the last five or six years uh i i don't think it's anything to be to hold his head down about at all he's uh, been a very good driver he's actually uh, come through the 410 ranks previous to that run in the 360s where he won five championships in a row at knoxville he's won two uh, features in the 410 class and and uh, although he's had more success in the 360s and the 410 is more challenging i think you know, he's done a very well this year transitioning up to the 410 class, so it's been really exciting to watch him. 
kind of progress as the season goes. And, and you can tell kind of just with the eye test in my mind that he has done better as the season's gone. So hopefully he, uh, he can have a good showing here at the Nationals in the next couple of weeks. When we come back, next World Raceway Inside Line will wrap up the show. So stay tuned. This is Knoxville Raceway Inside Line on KBOE. Welcome back to the Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. Coming up this Saturday night at the Knoxville Raceway is week number 16 of the Lucas Oil Knoxville Championship Cup Series. It is Candy's Flowers Night. The last Saturday night before we get to the 360 Nationals, I would expect uh, you know close to 80 cars again this Saturday night. No 305s, but with the 410 and the 360s. And being in the week before the 360 Nationals, I would suspect quite a few more cars coming to be testing and tuning, getting ready for the Nationals, which will start next Thursday. The Arnold Motor Supply 360 Nationals starting July 31st. It runs through August 2nd. That Thursday, Friday are qualifying nights. The field is split in half, and uh, half the cars will run Thursday, half the cars will run Friday, and that split of who's racing what night is available at KnoxvilleRaceway.com. Go to the news section, and you'll see the split there of who's qualifying which night. And Sunday, August 3rd, is the third annual Capitani Classic. That is a 410 sprint car show only out there on Sunday night. Last year, we had 82 cars entered for that event. It pays 5000 to win, so should be a really good show there. That'll be the last 410 tune-up before the Nationals coming up. Then on Thursday, August 6th, the 54th annual FVP Knoxville Nationals presented by Casey's General Store. That starts Wednesday, August 6th. Thursday, August 7th, those two are the qualifying nights. You'll see the draw there as far as who's qualifying which night at the KnoxvilleRaceway.com website. And that runs Friday the 8th and Saturday the 9th is the finals of the Knoxville Nationals. So August 6th to the 9th, the Knoxville Nationals coming up. This coming Saturday night is Free Kids Night, 19 and under. Get in free this Saturday night at Knoxville Raceway. Don't forget to save your Casey's General Store receipts this week. $50 or more on a receipt will get you two tickets for $20. Seniors ages 60 and up, you can get a discount of $3. Pillow Corp, Nationwide Insurance, Farm Bureau members get a $5 discount. So get out and enjoy the races this Saturday night before uh, the big festivities come in here next Thursday night at the 360 Nationals. If you missed Dirt Dreams earlier today on MAV TV, it'll, it'll be on again tonight at 9.30. It airs every Thursday on MAV TV, 11 a.m., 2 p.m., and at 9.30 p.m. Don't forget to listen to the Checker Flag program on Tuesday nights with Jeff Kropp and Tony Paris. That's Tuesday nights here on KBOE from 7 to 8 p.m. And that's going to throw the checkered flag for this show tonight here at Knoxville Raceway Inside Line. Thank you for listening to us tonight here on KBOE. Be sure to stay connected with the Knoxville Raceway with KnoxvilleRaceway.com. You can follow us on Twitter, like the Facebook page, and uh, lots of ways to stay connected there. So I want to thank Clint Garner for joining us tonight, and we'll see you Saturday night at the races. My name is Eric Arnold, and this is Knoxville Raceway Inside Line on KBOE 104.9 and KBOEradio.com.